Hey guys, it's Ian from ianbaloomusic.com. Today we're going to be unpacking how to use Waves Tune real time. Um, so I've got a track pulled up. I'm going to play a sample of it and the tuning that I'm using. She says she like the way I sing. You make me want to be myself. She says she like the heat I bring. All right, so that's a good example of what it sounds like. Um, let's pop open to some of these functionalities. So I've got it set to more of like a pop, hard tune, hip hop vocal style. Um, but this can be used for pretty subtle tuning as well. Just depends on what you're looking for. If you mess around with all of these controls here, you can get most sounds that you'd want from a tuner. First things first, speed. Speed is like the attack of the effect. How long does it take? for the tuner to start tuning a note. So right now I have it set to 0.1 milliseconds, which is really fast, so it's instantaneous. Uh, but if I kick it up, um, let's say, yeah, give it you know, 46 milliseconds before it actually starts tuning a note, you'll hear it slip and slide and kind of find its place a little bit more. She says she like the way I sing. You make me wanna be myself. She says she like I'll exaggerate it and tune it up even higher. You can hear it slide around a little bit more, um, but it still sounds good. It still sounds it sounds a little bit more natural. Uh, so that's just one key of the tone that you can you can mess with. Next thing I'm gonna point out is note transition. So I'm gonna turn back the speed to uh, 0.1 all the way down, so it's as hard as possible. And then we're gonna go to note transition. Uh, I had it set pretty low, and this is saying how many milliseconds does it take for it to go from one note to another. So if it's on a G and it says, okay, I hear an A coming through, I'm going to tune it to an A, how long does it take to go from one note to another? So right now, instantaneously, you get that hard tune hip hop pop sound. She says she like the way I sing. A very obvious auto tune. But let's say we set it to, uh, again, around 50. She says she like the way I sing. You can hear it sliding around a little bit from note to note. Um, that's going to allow things to sound a little bit more natural if that's what you're looking for. Um, so usually somewhere in a sweet spot around uh, 10 if you kick the speed up is a little good. She says she like the way I sing. You make me wanna be so there you go. You can definitely hear it's tuned, but it's quite a bit more natural than if it were hard tuned. The next thing I'll cover is tolerance. Um, tolerance is saying, okay, I hear a G, I'm tuning it to a G, um, but now it's getting a little sharp. It's going to a G sharp, and actually it's over a G sharp. It's closer to an A. T Tolerance is saying, hey, when it's in that G sharp, give that singer a little bit of a grace period before I actually switch it to an A note. So 40 cents, um, there's 100 cents in a semitone. So at G, there's 100 cents from G to G sharp. Uh, and so forth. So 100, uh, 140 is what it would be if I have it set all the way to max. So that's saying, hey, if we go to a G sharp and then 40 cents more, almost getting closer to an A than a G sharp even, um, we'll still let it stay on that G. So if you've got someone that's really pitchy, maybe someone that's more of a rapper and not even a singer, you can set that up pretty high and it'll keep a note uh, a little bit better. It'll have to be very deliberate in your note change to actually get the tuner to change with it. The time is saying how long. So, okay, we kick up, we're at 140 cents. We're like a, it's like a G sharp and a half kind of. Um, we're almost closer to an A than anything else. I'll give him 300 milliseconds before I actually tune it to an A. So, um, 300 milliseconds above G sharp and then I'm gonna snap it into an A. So this can be great if it's okay, someone's pitchy and they're jumping all over the place, it's not going to throw it into all sorts of different notes. Great, again, for people that aren't really singers, um, especially on a track like this, uh, it's pretty key. You can link these two together, the speed and the note transition. Uh, these are kind of, like as I said, you kind of wanna link them. Um, it doesn't really do anything but just sets their values uh, to a similar ratio. This is great because 
um, the higher the speed, the higher the note transition if you're looking for a natural sound. Uh, but I usually leave that unselected and mess with that myself. Vibrato is the last effect on here. It doesn't add vibrato. I wish it did. I know Antares Auto-Tune has a feature that adds vibrato. This just says, hey, um, I'll allow the vibrato to come through. The thing about this is it also allows like a shakiness in the note to go through, um, which really doesn't sound pleasing. So um, to me, it's not really that useful um, unless someone's got really great vibrato control and has pitchiness, but that just doesn't seem like a realistic singer. Um, you can set it to zero, so that's totally flat, um, or you can set it above 100% to 200% to even more accentuate the vibrato. Um, I haven't found a lot of use for it, so I usually leave it off. Uh, if we're going over to the right side, we're on the correction point here. Um, obviously, no correction if I turn it off. She said she liked the way I sing. Sliding around, terrible vocals. Uh, turn them back on. She said she liked the and it's tuned. So the percentage here is, okay, how far do we want it to tune? How much of this tuning here do we want to apply to our vocal track? 50%? Let's try it. She said she liked the way I sing. Okay, so I can hear it's tuned. You make me wanna be but it's sliding around, she it's a little bit more natural. It's not that bad. Um, so mess around with this. Usually I like to keep it between 60 and 90. Um, if you've just got a wrapper and you're looking for that distortion, throw it up to a hundred. Uh, but usually 60 to 90, even for, uh, hip hop vocals and pop vocals, it sounds pretty good. Cause I like to hear some of that break in the notes, but, um, not so much that it takes all the character away from the original vocal format is a little bit complicated to explain. So I'll go over it really quickly and go into detail in other videos, but ultimately it's best if I show you how it sounds. You make me wanna be myself. That was a nice smooth self. Okay. Listen to that word self. If I turn it off, you make me wanna be myself. So. kind of like to accentuate that tone. It messes with the tonal quality. Uh, because when you're tuning a vocal, the um, it sounds tonally different when you uh, boost or when you raise the tuning or decrease the tuning. It sounds tonally different. The corrected format is saying, okay, we've corrected the tuning, but we're going to leave that vocal tone alone. We're going to actually compensate for it to make the vocal tone sound unaffected. You make me wanna be so it doesn't get more nasally and then less nasally. I'll hit that one more time. You make me wanna be so you can hear that. Um, when you have it corrected, it adds a little bit of a digital kind of sound to the highs uh, in your vocals, uh, but it sounds a lot more natural. I usually leave it on. Um, you can leave it off if you're looking for even like more of that kind of almost distortion from auto-tune where it's really breaking up the vocals and giving it a uh, unique, more experimental uh, tone. All right, coming down, we're going to check out the range. This is pretty self-explanatory. What's your singer's range? And you can pick the appropriate one. Or you can just drag these little ends here. And what this is doing is saying, okay, I will correct notes from this G to, um, to this G. It's just an octave of notes that I want to correct. If it goes outside of that, don't have it correct them. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. You make me want to be myself. Actually, I'll play a little bit further ahead. You make me wanna be so that first note, the sing, corrected, auto-tuned, and then uh, when it went down to those lower notes, it just left them and sent them through without any tuning. So that can be great if you've got maybe just one low note um, or maybe a note that uh, the tuner thinks is a low note, you can just cut it off. Um, usually I would only set it, I would only narrow it if there's a problem, leave it pretty open on just the generic. And then, um, if some of the notes are sounding weird, higher tuned or lower tuned, you can adjust from there. This is a setting. If you want to correct the notes with MIDI instead of the automatic tuning, so you can play an A on your MIDI track and it'll tune whatever the vocal is to an A. Um, it can be useful, but if you're going to do that, you might as well go ahead and get the 
the waves tune uh, non real time. Uh, I like this because it's automatic. Um, but that's something you can you can dive into if you link up your uh, a MIDI track with the the plugin. Scale is the last thing um, that just affects what's going on up here. It's going to set automatically to chromatic. Don't have it on chromatic. This is not good. This is not what you want um, in almost all instances. Set it to the scale of the song or the beat. Uh, for this one, it's G major. And what this is going to do, it's going to only allow notes to come through that are in that scale. So I'm just going to, for, for goofs here, for fun, I'm going to set it to uh, E major. Hey. So it's just throwing notes in there that are not part of um, the scale. It does not sound good. Um, and this will be reflected up here. So instead, if you wanted to, and it gives you a lot of options in this drop down, um, I usually only use natural minor or major, but if you wanted to, what you could do is say, hey, um, there's this weird part of the song where the singer does a walk down and actually plays the uh, the F. I know it's a G major, but I actually have to leave um, the F available for tuning because he goes off scale a little bit. You can open that up. Um, you'll notice it changes all the Fs on the, um, the scale, but if you select this group octaves button and turn that off, you can go ahead and uh, affect which ones you want to change individually. The last thing is this is signifying that it's an illegal note. It's saying it will not tune it, it'll tune it to the higher note or the lower note, the D or the C in this instance. Um, if it hits a C sharp, if that's what the tuner thinks the vocalist is doing. If we click it, it'll go to an arrow up. That'll say, if we're detecting a C sharp, we're gonna change it to a D automatically. And then there's a uh, arrow down. If we're detecting a C sharp, we're gonna change it to a C automatically. And then that is saying, if we're detecting a C sharp, we're gonna let it through, but we're not gonna tune it. It's just gonna go through um, unprocessed. And then uh, nothing there means, yes, this, this note is open for tuning business, if you will. Um, so those are the selections there. And um, then reset scale. If say you've gone way off the grid and you realize you've made a mess of everything, it'll bring it back to normal. That's all the functionalities of Waves Tune Real Time. Um, so enjoy using this plugin. This is a great alternative to Antares Auto-Tune. Um, it's a good middle ground if, say, you've been using uh, the included tuner, if you've been using Pitcher in FL Studio or uh, the included tuner in whatever DAW you use, um, or something like G-Snap to, to finally jump out into a, a paid product that's going to be uh, miles beyond it. I highly recommend this. It's not going to be as many options and functionalities as Antares Auto-Tune, but it will at least get you to a place of some better tuning, some higher quality tuning. Um, and the most important thing about this is really understand uh, and take the time to mess with all of these um, functions here, all of these parameters. And I'm willing to bet that you'll be able to get pretty close to what you're looking for. Um, but you do have to mess around with it. You do have to experiment. You do have to understand what each control is doing. If you say, hey, I want this hard tune sound and then turn note transition down and speed transition down and it doesn't sound right. Yeah, you know, you're going to have to mess with a few other things. Uh, it's not just plug and play. So, um, but definitely relatively easy to understand. Um, if you have any questions or don't think I covered something well, you can ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, but enjoy recording with uh, Waves Tune real time. Thanks for watching.